you, Stephen Fortner, here at the first annual Synthplex 2019 in Burbank with James Bernard of Spectrosonics. Hello. Spectrosonics has a wonderful new technology uh, where they have hardware profiles and patch libraries that are pre-mapped to um, just about every hardware <laughs> synth ever. Maybe not. <laughs> Almost, but it sort of yeah. feels like that. It feels like it, yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it, you grab the filter knob on whatever hardware synth you have, or you grab the attack knob or whatever it is, and the corresponding knob just works within Spectrosonics Omnisphere, the world's go-to soft synth. James, tell us more about it. Sure. So we're showing uh, version 2.6 here. Uh, it was announced at NAMM, but we actually have the released version. It's out now, available, free update. Uh, and so what we're doing with 2.6 and with the hardware synth integration is, as you mentioned, uh, we have about 65 hardware synths now that are supported with profiles. And what this hardware synth integration allows you to do is just literally connect your synth, select it in Omnisphere, and right away everything's mapped out to work exactly as you'd expect it, it would work. So any synth that you have, if you're familiar with that synth, or familiar with the sound and how the function should be, it will behave exactly the same with Omnisphere, except that now you're hearing Omnisphere as the sound source. Uh, in many instances with these hardware synths, we've gone to the level of capturing the, the sort of flavor of that synth. So the waveforms, in some instances, we actually had to create new filters to make that hard Omnisphere sort of behave the way it should behave. So for example, on the OB6, we had to put in a state variable filter so that we had it. Um, so there's a lot more going on by Nita, sort of beneath the scenes here, than just a one, you know, one parameter to one slider, sort of a functionality. Sometimes on some of the synths, you may move one knob, but there may be five or six different things happening with scaling, with inversions, just to make that sort of character that you would expect from your synth to happen inside of Omnisphere. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about sort of what uh, hardware synth integration can do for you. But with this new version 2.6, we've got a number of new synths that were added. We'll cover some of, the, some of them here. We can't cover them all. Um, and we also have got a number of new patches that come with the update. Even if you don't own any of the synths that we have here, you still can use all the great new patches. You don't have to have one of these synths in order to great, get all these great features. Uh, we, so we've got about 600 new patches that were added. Um, what I want to show here is we're going to start on, on one of the first synths that uh, had MIDI, which was the, the Juno 106. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that not only did the Juno 106 have MIDI in and out of note data, but actually was the first MIDI synthesizer that actually had the ability to send the control information of the sliders out, and it did it via system-exclusive messages. So what we're doing with Omnisphere is actually reading that system exclusive data and it's being used to control Omnisphere. So if I start to you know, adjust any of the things like the envelope, for example, or the filter. And yeah, the Omnisphere will actually jump, the, the UI will actually go to the screen with the parameter that you're adjusting. So it actually is really intuitive. You can disable that. There's ways that you can even uh, modify the tweaks if you want so that maybe this filter doesn't work on this particular profile. There's a lot of customization that you can have there so that you can modify it to your liking. So what I want to show you too is one of the new things that we've added in Omnisphere 2.6, which is in the arpeggiator, we've, we've done a newly enhanced and revamped arpeggiator. So what we've done with the arpeggiator is we've got some new features, new modes, uh, there's a lot more detail on the website if you check it out, all the different modes and how they affect the notes that are being output when you've put in core data and how it's actually being put out by the, uh, by the arpeggiator itself. You can look at those modes here. Things like join, spread, join and spread, spread and join, stairs up, down, vice versa. We also have what is unique and different about this arpeggiator is these step modifiers. So per step, you can have different parameters that you can set on the steps. Things like the ability to transpose certain steps, up or down, two octaves, adding in note slides per step, so I can do things like short slides or longer slides, even tied slides with, sli with some slided no slid notes that kind of have happen within a note that's held down. So it can be interesting to get like sort of 303 style patterns very easily. And uh, the ability to set these step dividers, which I'll show in a second, which is when it hits a step, it can actually chop up the notes and play that, like three notes per step, four notes per step, what have you. And what's unique is these new chord voicing and chord inversions per step. 
So this is pretty unique, and I've got a preset pattern here that I'm gonna play. So with this, if I've got these interesting chord inversions and chord voicings, if you're someone that's not really, you know, a great keyboard player like me, for example, I'm gonna play a simple triad, and it makes these really interesting changes that can happen. So I'm gonna do something simple. I'm just here, very, very simple sort of uh, chord triads that I'm playing, but I'm getting all these different changes to the inversions and the voicings themselves. So it's really fun, a lot of really inspirational patterns that are there. There's a ton of them that come with uh, Omnisphere 2.6. You can modify them, customize them to however you want. What we can also do, I, I can show you how we can do that. We can use uh, on the arpeggiator section here, I can, I can take the patterns, I can rotate them, move them to the left or right, duplicate different ranges, Sh uh, shuffle them, reverse them, kind of switch things up a bit. So it's a lot, of, a lot of ways that we can modify these patterns that are there. One of the other features that we've got is this capture mode. And this is really cool. So what we can do with the capture mode is when we're playing an arpeggiator, and this is kind of a, a thing that comes up with a lot of arpeggiators. Is when you're playing an arpeggiator, it's a lot of fun. You get some really interesting stuff that happens. But then when you want to actually use that in your music, it can be a little bit difficult because what happens a lot of times in the MIDI information that you're playing may not transfer over when you try to record it into your sequencer. So a lot of times you're left with the option of like just recording it as audio, but now you're married to the sound and exactly how you played it. With the capture mode, when I set it up, I can have it uh, set up to either from one to 16 bars. So I'm gonna do it for one bar. And what it's doing is it's now waiting for me to play some notes. So as I'm playing notes, So everything that you just heard will now be captured as a MIDI file, which I can then drag and drop into my DAW, onto my desktop, and I can use it to further edit it and modify it and just drop it into a sequence. Now that could be used to play back Omnisphere, maybe a completely different sound, or even some other synth. Maybe a hardware synth, maybe a Eurorack synth if I've got MIDI to CV. So I can do some interesting patterns there. So there's a lot of flexibility. It's a really cool feature, very useful. So let's move on here. I could spend all day talking about the arpeggiator, but I won't. So, uh, following along our wall here, uh, I wanna cover some of the other synths that we have here. And again, we've got a ton here, as you can see, if you do a little quickie around the booth, there's about 37 synths that we brought with us. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of really fun ones here. This particular synth, the Roland D50, is actually sort of near and dear to us at Spectrosonics because Eric Persing was involved with this synth and very instrumental in making this synth what it is. This is a classic synth. This is one of the iconic synths of our time. With Omnisphere and the D50 and the PG-1000, you can use this to control Omnisphere. And as we do with any of the other synths that are supported, we try to capture the flavor, the essence of sort of that synth. So when you're using the PG-1000 with the D50 and with Omnisphere, you wanna have it sort of sound and give you that flavor of the D50. Well, we've actually sampled a lot of the sounds that are in the D50 and they're now in Omnisphere. So sort of the classic stuff, like so for example, this soundtrack. Classic sound, we've heard that many times, but now it's an atmosphere. We can even do a sort of a little bit of an updated version of that. And then using the PG-1000, I can modify that sound. All right, so we've got that. These are kind of hard to find these days, but if you're lucky enough to have one, it's a great controller for Omnisphere as well. Moving on to a synth that I think we all have probably a number of these in our collection, right? Everyone's got at least two or three, maybe, Andromeda <laughs> A6s. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think this is like the first time I've ever physically touched one, is at the show here. Um, these are kind of a rare bird, and, and, and one of the really powerful synths of our time. But if you have this, this is a very, very powerful synth. Lots of controls. You get some really, really interesting controls of the sound. Using it with Omnisphere, again, we've captured some of that essence. Let's go to a different sound here, maybe this chunky stacker. All 
lots of control on there. Moving on, this is something we actually uh, did not have at the NAM show, but we're really excited about, which is support for the Roland Super Jupiter MKS-80 and the programmer, the MPG-80. Also another one of those rare birds, but if you have one, again, this works directly with Omnisphere, so you can use it to control Omnisphere. And again, you get that classic flavor and character of the Roland Super Jupiter there. Moving on to probably my favorite of all the profiles. I'm a little bit jaded in this because this was the synth that I cut my teeth on modular synthesis with, which is the Korg MS-20, semi-modular synth. This is not an actual MS-20. Back uh, a couple of, some time ago, Korg made uh, a piece of software called the Leg Legacy Collection. And included in that software was this MS-20 IC, which as you can see is just, you know, USB out. So this has no actual audio anything on this. It's strictly a controller. Everything that you're doing here is all MIDI. So, kind of get that sort of aggressive, angry MS-20 sound. But the best part for me, other than it being super cute, is that it's got patch points. Well, these patch points, actually send out controller information, which means that we can now use patch cables and create modulation routings in Omnisphere using these, which is pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sample and hold output right here, and we're gonna patch that into the pitch input. If you notice on the screen, when I do that, immediately we get a routing that's created. Take that out, put that in, and it creates a modulation routing in the modulation matrix. Pretty cool. So let's just sort of hear what that sounds like. RTB2 for days. Now, what's really cool about the way we've supported that is that not only can we patch this sample and hold to pitch, but let's say I also want to take that same sample and hold and patch it to maybe the filter. I can use a mult, one of these stackable cables, take the output, patch it in, and also using the output here, patch that as well into the low pass filter. And right away, we've got that connected. So lots of fun stuff. You can imagine how, how much hours we can spend patching Omnisphere using cables. But so that's a little bit of what we're doing with, uh, with Omnisphere 2.6. And again, this is available now and it's free of charge. It's a free update for anyone who has Omnisphere 2.0.